Now, President Man Baby Trump recently accused the New York Times of practicing what he called sick journalism in a tweet he fired off earlier today. Uh, now, here's a tweet. When will the failing New York Times admit that their front page story on the New Mexico deal at the border is a fraud and nothing more than a badly reported hit job on me? Something that has been going on since the first day announced for the presidency. Sick journalism! Oh, now what in the world is he talking about? Okay, well, the Times recently published a piece on negotiations with Mexico. Now, according to the paper, Trump had claimed that the Mexico deal had some secret provisions. Well, they're not so secret if you go blabbing about them. Uh, now, those are provisions that Mexico didn't really come out and said that they agreed to, or at least that we know of. Uh, now, of course, a report came out later where Trump is slightly right, uh, and that's a weird sentence to, to say, um, but that basically uh, Mexico had said, okay, well, look, we'll, we'll be okay with, if this doesn't work out, we'll be okay with some sort of asylum deal, but we really haven't worked it out quite yet, and we're in the middle of negotiations. Now, as you're going to see, that's different than what Trump had actually claimed, um, Per the report, Mr. Trump insisted that Mexico had agreed to take significant actions to stem the flow of migrants at the border with the United States that had not previously taken and that some of them had yet to be revealed. Well, it turns out that's obviously incredibly false. They actually had agreed to do some of these things before, which included, of course, taking their, uh, their National Guard and putting, placing it at their border. Uh, so to try to lessen the flow of, of, of migrants coming in from Honduras, El Salvador, etc. Uh, and again, they had talked about doing that previously. Uh, now, <clears throat> Trump had said, quote, on Twitter, we have been trying to get some of these border actions for a long time, as we have, as have other administrations, but we're not able to get them or get them in full until our signed agreement with Mexico, which there is no sad agreement. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> no signed agreement. Said sad there for a second, but again, you'll see why. <laughs> now, now, the question is, of course, why mention them in, in, unless you're ready to unveil them, right? Which clearly you are not. Well, because it's Donald Trump. Donald Trump's lying. He just, he straight up lies about things that he shouldn't actually be. Look, I, I say you shouldn't lie, right? You shouldn't lie no matter what, but... Again, these, we're dealing with politicians, of course, and Donald Trump. He's just a compulsive liar. He's pathological. He, he can't help himself, right? So when you say Donald Trump is lying, nobody is really surprised. Say, hey, uh, Donald Trump's lying. You go to somebody on the street, Donald Trump's lying about this. Most of the time, you're just going to get a blank stare like, and he lies every day. I mean, he's got thousands of documented lies, but okay, anyway. Now, the trouble with this right? Uh, among the fact that it's just being completely dishonest is you also have, uh, for example, with negotiations, and this, this entire thing is negotiations with the Mexican president. Uh, now, <clears throat> you have pres uh, Mexican president uh, uh, Obrador, right? And we call him AMLO, right? Uh, he is under pressure from his constituents, uh, and, you know, critics and, and things like that to not cave to Donald Trump, right? Especially when it comes to some secret agreement, right? Now, that would be politically problematic for the Mexican president. Now, the idea, according to the article, uh, that the agreement included secret provisions could once again royal relations between the two countries, which have been fraught since Mr. Trump took office. Mm. Well, when you start your presidential campaign off by calling Mexicans rapists and criminals, yeah, that tends to make them a little bit angry. It tends to royal tensions. <laughs> uh, besides, let's be honest, right? You want to talk about immigration. It's not Mexicans that are coming across the border. Uh, it's Hondurans, who, by the way, there's a reason for Hondurans uh, to come over. They suffered a uh, U.S.-backed coup in 2009 that has disrupted their entire country. Uh, now, not only that, uh, you also have Guatemalans and El Salvadorans who also suffered due to the U.S.-led war on drugs. 
So it appears that we've had a pretty negative impact in Central America with our drug wars and, of course, our uh, tendency to back coups to put in, uh, you know, dictatorial, corporate-friendly strongmen. Now, so, so the problem with that, and there are many, um, <laughs> but one of the big problems is it makes places uh, unstable. It makes it so that you don't want to live there, that you are in constant danger of, of death and dismemberment, things like that. That makes you want to migrate somewhere where it's a little bit safer. And a lot, of course, a lot of people, since it is the United States that's causing these problems, a lot of people are saying, okay, well, you caused these problems. Then I guess I'm going to go to the United States. Might as well, right? So look, Mexico is not sending migrants. In fact, nobody's sending migrants. That's where many migrants are, are coming from. <laughs> and, and besides, oh, okay, so they're going through Mexico to get there, and we know that, right? Now, Donald Trump's so dumb that they call those Mexican countries, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, and Guatemala. Freaking hilarious. Um, but also an incredibly important and super sad situation. And not something that I guess is, is, is all too humorous when you really look at what's going on. Uh, but anyway, now Trump says, Mexico, they're, just not, they're not doing enough. Okay, they're, they're not doing enough to stem the flow of migrants. They need to do something. But wait a minute. It's not their job to stop people from fleeing from Amer uh, to America. Especially when America caused a lot of their problems. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Now, as I said, AMLO is under a lot of pressure here to avoid looking like he's going to cave to Donald Trump. While also, of course, trying to avoid the disastrous tariffs that are going to hurt both of our economies. Mexico is one of our biggest trading partners. You do tariffs on Mexico, it's going to be a complete and utter crap show. It's not going to go well. Uh, so, you know, we would like to avoid that. Mexico likes to avoid that. So they're going to try to do something, as I said before. They're mobilizing the newly created National Guard units to try and do some guarding at the border, etc. But nothing's going to be enough for Donald Trump unless the flow of migrants is zero. And there's just no possible way that you could actually do that. Unless you're in the United States, which right now has a net zero immigration. More people are leaving than, than are actually coming in. And the whole humanitarian crisis at the border is a man-made humanitarian crisis. <clears throat> but anyway, the report says that the suggestion that Mr. Lopez Obrador made additional concessions that have not been disclosed could increase pressure on, in his government. And that's what makes these lies a horrible idea. Again, you could lie to puff yourself up, right? It's called puffery. And that Donald Trump does, uses that all the time, right? But you're doing sensitive negotiations with the threat of tariffs, which essentially is a tax on American uh, citizens. It raises the price of a, a lot of the products that, you know, be, uh, that are imported into the country. And so this could have real devastating economic consequences. You shouldn't lie about something like that. That has real consequences. Now, you want to lie about, oh, I hit the biggest election day crowd ever okay but that's stupid and obviously false and easily disproven right but at least it doesn't hurt anybody at least it doesn't have a negative economic impact on the country or two different countries but this you don't want to lie about this that's horrible but anyway uh more now they talk about concessions right w well what concessions are they again i don't know I, nobody has any details about this. So why lie and say that there are concessions? And see, here's my problem with the Times, right? Now, <clears throat> the Times, they do good journalism. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I'm not going to begrudge them that, right? Um, but they give, the, they give Donald Trump too much credit. <laughs> and they give him the benefit of the doubt sometimes, which drives me insane. They go on to speculate, by the way, that... Uh, the concession had something to do with a safe third country treaty. Now, the Trump administration, to be fair, they have expressed an interest in wanting that, right? And, and, and let me explain what that is. Under such a treaty, migrants entering Mexico would have to apply for asylum in Mexico. 
for the United States. Now, that, of course, breaks international treaties, international law, as you have to be present in the country to be able to apply for asylum. Now, there's another thing uh, where... Uh, hold on here. Let, let, me, let me finish this first. Uh, the United States would then have the legal ability to reject asylum seekers who tried to enter the country if they had not sought refuge in Mexico first. Now, I guess a supposed middle ground approach, I, I know I, I, the Joe Biden, I guess, just came out, but uh, the, I guess the uh, like a concession that could be possible but would, uh, is very, pretty unlikely to happen, at least according to uh, what I think, my read of the situation, is that people in Mexico uh, would basically apply, or I'm sorry, uh, wait in Mexico, uh, migrants would, they apply for asylum, but then go back into Mexico to wait until their asylum cases are adjudicated. Would they agree to that? Probably not, but there is the possibility, at least the administration is hoping that, hey man, if we threaten these terrorists, then at least they could agree to something like that, and then Donald Trump would have his so-called concessions. But in reality, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. And that's, again, disastrous, right? Uh, because we have this, this economic sort of Damocles basically hanging above our necks. And guess who's controlling it? Donald freaking Trump, the dumbest man alive. Now, uh, back to the article for a second here. Now, officials from both countries, and this goes to the likelihood of this, said the two sides reached no commitment on such a treaty. And they said the provisions that were included in the deal were essentially reaffirmations of actions Mexico had already agreed to in previous discussions. So what we have right now is a situation where Donald Trump is lying and talking out of his rear. Look, the New York Times, again, they, they, they vastly overestimate Donald Trump. They just do. Trump lies, and he lies constantly. And in this case, those lies could blow up any potential deal. Because that's what happens. <laughs> and that's the final irony, of course. Him saying, I've got secret provisions in this deal that the, that the Mexicans agreed to. When they actually didn't, we'll do more to blow up the deal than anything else. And the only reason, of course, he claimed it in the first place was to signal to his base, I'm doing something about the immigration. You know, since he can't actually build this wall. I mean, the only section of the wall that's actually built, and, and it's astounding, right, is a very small section that was crowdfunded by a pretty shady individual. And so we don't actually know if that part of wall, the wall exists because they won't actually give the location. I know, it's crazy. Um, but all he's trying to do is, is, is signal to his base, look at me, I'm getting things that I'm winning. Please reelect me. And it's funny that he says that uh, because right now he's doing the opposite. He is not winning. He's losing bigly. Sad. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation, set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash tyt nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media